Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Ryan from TechNance, and today we're going to be taking a look at the underlying data structure behind the Bitcoin transaction system, the Merkle tree. So I'm sure you guys have heard of the blockchain by now, and this is kind of the system that represents that. So if you know anything about data structures, it's actually very similar to this system called a binary tree or binary search tree, where there's a node, which each one of these circles represents, and then each node holds a value. So we see 22, 50, 7, 10, 25, so on. And these arrows are pointers. Each node has up to two pointers, a left pointer and a right pointer. The left points to values that are smaller than the, the value in the node, and then the right points to value that values that are bigger. So as you can see, seven is less than 22, so it's on the left. One is less than seven, so it's on the right, or excuse me, on the left. And then 10 is on the right of seven because it's larger than it, and so on, just all the way down the tree. 50 is larger than 22, 56 is larger than 50, uh, but 25 is less than 50, so on. So the Merkle tree works pretty similarly to that, except the parents are not just values, they are hashes of the children. And the only thing that holds the transaction value is these bottom nodes, these leaves. Um, anything on the bottom that doesn't point to anything else, uh, like 8, 20, uh, 57, and 100, they're called leaf nodes. And these are the ones that in the Merkle tree are going to hold the values. Uh, and I'm sure you guys have seen these 32 byte values before. They're the ones that uh, contain information when you're sending through Coinbase or just through a wallet or whatever. So these 32 byte arrays, they hold uh, information on, you know, the input, the output, and then they're held, uh, they're always 32 bytes. And this is kind of what they look like. I'm sure you guys have seen this before if you've made any sort of transaction. Uh, they, they're kind of just gibberish to humans, but the computer, like, I mean, in, in the system, they understand that, like, this holds information on where it's going to, uh, how much is being sent, where it's being sent from, and so on. So that's kind of what the leaf nodes hold. Uh, and then the way that this is so secure is that the parents are hashes. So what this means is you take the first, uh, you take, like, transaction one and transaction two, and you kind of concatenate them together to a 64 byte array, which is 128 characters. And you pass it through a hashing function that creates a new 32 byte array that's stored in the parent's value. Uh, so the way that hash functions work are that uh, whenever you pass in an input, if you keep passing in the same input, like I pass in A, B, C, D, E, it's going to spit out like, you know, dollar sign one, two. Uh, but you cannot, there's no way of getting dollar sign one, two back to A, B, C, D, E. But every time you pass in ABCDE, it's going to spit out the same uh, value. So it's taken in the input and it's going to spit out the same output, but there's no way of getting the output back into an input. And then this guy's parent is the same thing. So it takes the hash of one, two and concatenates it with three, four and throws it back into the hashing function, the same function. And that's where you get this. And it works all the way up to the Merkle root, which is the top of the chain. Um, and then in Bitcoin's system right now, each block is one to four megabytes. I believe most are three to four. So they do like 500 to 2000 transactions. This is a very small tree. Obviously, there's only eight transactions here. Um, a block will probably do 500 to 2000 uh, transactions. It, it, it varies. It depends on the block. Okay, so here's a little bit of code for assignment that I did um, that shows this structure. So um, if you're calculating the hash here, you pass in the key, which uh, is the value that the node holds and then you search for its left child and its right child right here, and you concatenate them together. So we create a new array here, twice the size of, um, twice the size of each hash, and then we store both values. So everything on the left node is to the left and everything to the right. So if we have, uh, so if we have two transactions, one's one, two, three, four, and then the other is five, six, seven, eight, it's going to create one big hash that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it's going to pass it through this. Uh, this is actually the actual function that they use um, in the Merkle tree or that that like uh, they, they use for the Bitcoin blockchain. And it's going to spit back out some arbitrary thing that's going to be the size of um, the size of either one, not both of them combined. So why this is so important is that it's very secure. And the reason for this is that if someone tries to go tamper with a transaction and try to say, send it to their own wallet, um, they can't because through the Merkle root, you can actually go check all of its parents to verify that they are the, uh, they are the expected value. So if this is A, B, C, D, E, and this is um, F, G, H, I, whatever, 
and you put it through the hashing function and somebody changes this to like x y z one um the parent will not be the same because the hash function will create a new output for it so uh, it's going to go all the way through the tree and it's going to check if the parents meet the expected value if not then you know you know that the uh, transaction has been tampered with and then it's also very quick because you don't have to go and search every single one you can just ch uh, check every single parent so this is kind of what the code represents um if you check you go through the tree and then you check every single one of its parents or every single one of its ancestors and if and you rehash it and you check if the value uh, meets the rehashing so there's like the expected hash right here that we just created um, and if it doesn't then it's false and you know you kick them out you're like okay no that's the, you know you cheated the system um, so that's it I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one